This is part two of the MDSR how-to video. The calibration window has a red warning outline. This indicates that the user is entering an area of the software that can detune the MDSR and affect its performance. In the calibration window, the frequency of the transceiver and the MDSR are synchronized. The BFO frequency is set to compensate for the inaccuracy of the lift local oscillator and the, difference, and the difference of the computer's clock frequency. If the radio is used in transponder mode, the mode selection is fixed either to USB or LSB on the transceiver. This is achieved by setting the auto setup function to either USB or LSB, which locks the radio's mode accordingly. In this case, only the current configuration has to be set up. In lock to TXCR mode, the transceiver and the MDSR are locked into the same mode. In this case, each mode has to be set up separately because the transceiver slightly shifts the IF depending on the mode it's set to. The MDSR's BFO compensates for all the shifts and keeps the transceiver in sync. When the MDSR and the transceiver are in sync, the transceiver's internal modulation, modulation system can be used. TX communication can be conducted with the hand microphone plugged into the transceiver while the MDSR handles the RX side. This is called the MDSR light operation. In the settings for mode selector, the BFO offset for each mode can be selected. The current selection is for the transponder mode, and all the other selections reflect the mode the transceiver is in. The BFO can be set between 9 and 18 kilohertz. In the preset auto setup, select lock to TXCR option to ensure that the transceiver modes are locked with the MDSR. To calibrate a mode, select a carrier on a known frequency on the receiver. The easiest to use is WWV. In the IF frequency selector, choose the BFO kilohertz value that is closest to the carrier seen in the MDSR SA. By pressing the Save button, the BFO line will update to the new kilohertz location. Now the slider of the frequency offset adjustment control can be moved so that the carrier and the BFO line are on top of each other. The pitch of the carrier in the speaker will decrease as the BFO and the carrier are moving closer to each other. The Save button must be pressed and then the next mode can be selected in the settings for mode selector. As the specific modes are selected, the transceiver will change mode in unison with the MDSR. This procedure has to be repeated until all modes have been calibrated. Pressing the exit button allows the values to be saved on the hard drive and will be recalled as needed. The audio settings window. In the audio settings window, the sound card audio channels and their functions can be selected. In the input section, the IF and the microphone channels can be reversed to allow for easy hardware setup. In the case that a microphone input is used, instead of the line input, the attenuator has to be set to negative 20 decibels because the microphone input has a higher amplification. Use a different down converter other than the LIF 2011. With less conversion gain is, with, with less conversion gain is used, it might be necessary to increase the input gain by positive 20 decibels. In the MDSR audio processor, only one channel is used for the demodulated audio and only one speaker should be connected. The other channel is either used, is either used only for pre-processing of the mic audio or pre-processing and modulating to 12 kilohertz IF. This function can be selected with the DSP mic audio function. The COM port setup for P PTT port window has a red warning outline. The preferred method to control the PTT of the transceiver is through CAT command and OmniRig. 
Unfortunately, not all transceivers have a CAT PTT command. For these transmitters, the PTT port has to be used. There is also a selection to use an Arduino chip with a, an RS232 control routine available through the MDFR user group. When the set PTT with OmniRig is selected, the COM port is turned off. The selection of COM and Arduino require the port information to be filled in so that the program can access the right port. In the COM line setup, the specific pins of the RS232 port can be selected to activate the PTT of the transmitter. The MDSR, MDSR SA has to be restarted before the new PTT port setting take, takes effect, effect. This concludes the introduction and learning video for the MDSR. For more information, look for additional how-to videos about the MDSR. Thank you very much for watching this video, and the MDSR team would appreciate it if you could tell your friends about this great software development. The MDSR software is available from the Yahoo user group and is free for amateur radio use. If you would like to learn more or to contribute and work on the MDSR project, please visit the MDSR Yahoo user group and sign up as a member. Thanks again and all the best, the MDSR team.